Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another C++ tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed the first challenge episode. We're going to be doing a lot more of those, and they're going to be getting much more fun as we go along. So make sure you pay attention during the coming episodes so that you know everything you need to in order to tackle the next challenge. So today we're going to be learning about functions. Functions are a way for us to make our code look so much cleaner and so much easier to read, and it also makes it so that certain code is kind of reusable, so we don't have to just copy-paste a bunch of lines of code. We can just call the same function twice with different parameters. So the way we write a function is just like this int main here. We have first a return value and then second we have the name of the function. Then we have parentheses and then we have this body right here uh, indicated by these curly braces. Now when I say return value I mean what we do down here. So this return zero what it's actually doing is taking the number zero and returning it from int main. Now any number you return from int main is what's called an error code and it gets kind of printed out down here if I I think it should if I hit run and well, well it's gonna build it but what, what, what happens is whenever you run your program after your program ends it returns a little error code and if we say return means the program ran fine, everything is great. If we return something else, like negative one or one, then that's gonna tell us something went wrong, and we can actually see that. We can write different functions that return different things back to us. So what we're going to do is write a function to where you get the number of humans. So we're gonna take this code out of int main, and we're going to move it somewhere else. And this function is going to return num humans to int main. The way function calls work is whenever you call a function, it will return a value to you wherever you called it. So if we call the function here, we will get numhumans right here, which is what we're doing now, but we're gonna use a function to just make it look better, and it's gonna make us much better programmers in the long run. So let's go ahead and do that. Now first we wanna type what type it's going to return. So just like int main, this is going to return an integer because numhumans is an integer, so we type int. Now we can name it anything we want, but we wanna name it something that makes sense. So I'm going to name it get num humans humans and then you always type parentheses to indicate it's a function just like int main then on the next line or if you want you can do it on the same line you do your uh, curly braces for the body so here's where the code goes now what we're going to do is basically do this in that function so we can go ahead and start by copy pasting it it's not going to work right away so we copy paste it here, and then immediately we're going to get an error. It says error identifier num humans is undefined. What that means is get num humans, this function right here doesn't know what this is. It doesn't know where this variable is. But you're like, well, we just made the variable up here. Why doesn't it know what kind of variable it is or what the variable is? Well, that's because this function or this integer right here, num humans, is declared inside int main. So right down here, this get num humans doesn't know about it because anything that is referenced inside or anything that is declared inside int main cannot be read anywhere outside of int main. The only things that can see it are the things inside it, int main directly below where it's declared. So the way we are going to actually uh, do a C in here is we're going to just make another local version of the variable. We're gonna say int num humans. And it's called the same thing, but that's okay. This int num humans is completely different from this int num humans. They are separate variables. Even though they're called the same thing, since they're in different functions, that's fine. This is what's called having different scope. And we're going to learn more about scope in the future, but now you just need to remember that when you declare something in a function, it stays there just for that function. So this is now going to work. We're going to have our variable int num humans, we're going to see out into the number of humans, and then we're going to see in the variable into num humans, and then we're just going to return it. We're going to say return num humans, because the whole point of this function is to get this num humans value. So now, whenever we want to call this function, all we do is find the code that wants to call it right here. We'll put it here. This is where we got rid of the code. We're going to say num humans equals get num humans just like that so what's going to happen is as our program is running it's going to come along here 
and it's going to get to this line right here, this num humans equals get num humans. And it's going to go into this num humans function and it's going to resume right here. Now it's going to make a new variable called int num humans, the exact same name as this variable. However, they're completely different variables, so it's not going to conflict with that. This isn't going to give you an error. Then it's going to say see out the number of humans. We're going to get cn into num humans, and then we're going to return that. So this variable right here, this different, remember it's a different num humans variable, is going to set e get set equal to the return value from get num humans. And this get num humans returns num humans, which we get from cn. So this is going to behave exactly like it did before. Let's do the same thing for skeletons. And to make this really easy, all we have to do is copy paste this and change the words to skeletons. So this is going to say enter the number of skeletons and then we'll say skeletons num skeletons oops and then we'll just copy paste this and then change the function name to get num skeletons. Copy pasting can be dangerous because if you have an error then you copy paste the error but it also makes things a lot faster. The hotkey for copy is control C so if you just type control C on your keyboard it'll copy. Then if you go to the next line or wherever you want to paste it and type control V that will paste it. And then if you want to undo what you just did or if you want to undo anything you type control Z. These three hotkeys will help you become a much faster programmer. I use them a lot. Copy paste is super useful. It's so, so it's really good to learn the hotkeys so you're not right clicking all the time to do copy paste. It you know it, it speeds up your workflow a little bit. So here we have our new git num skeletons function. And we're going to come up here and call it instead of this line right here. So see it made our main function a little bit smaller, right? It made it a little bit easier to read, so num skeletons equals get num skeletons because we want the return value. It made our, our uh, main function a little easier to read. Now as we keep adding more of this stuff into functions, it's going to get smaller and smaller and much more easy to read. And anybody who's reading through the program can just look at this and be like, oh, we get the number of skeletons. And if they don't care, they can just keep on reading. You know, if, what if they don't care how this works? They care about how the rest of your program works. They'll just read by it. Before, they were kind of forced to look through that code. Now, if they really care about getting them skeletons, they can just zoom down to it and look at it. Or if they're in Visual Studio, they can right click it and click go to definition, which will zoom them down there so they can actually look at the code. This is what's going to make your code readable, reusable. What if we wanted to call it again? If we wanted to get num humans again, we can do that. And again, and again, each time you call this, you're saving this many lines of code in your program. This is why functions are so darn useful and you're going to love them. So stay tuned for, net, for the next video. We're going to talk about functions some more. Sorry if this confused you, but hopefully the next episode will clear it up. Thanks, guys.